Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is a Democratic senator from the great state of California. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Senator Kamala Harris. Throw up both my hands. Nice good to see you again. How you been? I'm good. You seem you know, good. We're going to get to this in a moment, but the, 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 your new book is called The Truths We Hold, mm -hmm. and you look very happy on the cover. Yeah. You look very happy on the cover. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the world for a second before okay. we get back to the book, because I'm not, not sure why you look so happy on anything, the cover. Even here. though we legalize it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay, shut down. Yeah. Shutdowns still going on. Day 20. Tomorrow's going to be a record. If we gets to it gets to Saturday, it'll be a record of 22 days. Any updates? You're in the Senate. What's the yeah. chatter like in the cloakroom? The chatter in the cloakroom is that we have hundreds of thousands of Americans who are not going to get paid. And um, they're not getting paid because the President of the United States has a vanity project that he doesn't want to give up. And it is outrageous. It is irresponsible. These families are, you know, these 800,000 people come with families. They come with communities who are all suffering because this president had a campaign promise that was ridiculous. And he is now afraid that it will cost him politically if he doesn't follow through on it. And let's put it in context. Right before Christmas, the United States Senate unanimously, in a bipartisan approach, passed a funding bill. It was a voice we, vote. It All was a favor, voice. Aye. We were singing Christmas carols on the floor of the United States Senate. I was singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> At Seriously. Or after the vote. No, during. We were all very jubilant. This was it was it was a no brainer. So let Stephen. me ask you about when something like that happens. So so the the word is for just you know schmoes like me who don't know is that the, the indication that uh, 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 Leader McConnell got was that Trump would sign off on this and so he held the vote. Right. It was a hundred to zero. You right. guys voted in favor right. of, uh, of of passing a, a, a continuing resolution. That's exactly right to fund the government. So so did Trump. Pull the rug out from underneath McConnell, or did McConnell just go off half cocked? I've not talked with McConnell personally, but I, I have observed him over the course of two years to be very shrewd, very smart, and doesn't make a move without thinking about the tenth move before he makes the first one. And I have to believe that he had some indication that when that moved out of the Senate, it was a done deal. Mm -hmm. And so to the point, Again, people were singing Christmas carols. People got on planes. My colleague, Brian Schatz from Hawaii, flew to Hawaii and was home for 17 minutes when he heard he had to come back to D.C. to vote. I went back to California, so home for half a day, came back to D.C. across the aisle because people were taken by surprise. Now, the and buzz is that the Republicans are, are cracking a little bit. Underneath the the pressure yeah. and sort of the blame uh, that the president, who they have backed wholly, right. now are are they cracking? When, you, when you're like when when the cameras are off and you guys are back in the cloakroom, are they cracking or is that just the sound of the ancient dry skin? <laughs> no, I you know I have to give my Republican cr uh, colleagues credit for knowing that this is something that is indefensible. And so they're speaking their truth. They're speaking the truth that we need to keep the government running. We need to get the government back up and running and stop holding the American people hostage because of the president's vanity project. How do you, how do you imagine this ends? I mean, listen, as, as it is right now, each day that these folks have not been paid, each day that they're not performing their jobs, there's already harm that's been done. So let's be clear about that. This is not, this, th th this has already been something that is hurtful and harmful to the American people. How does it end? It has to end with the government running and functioning. It has to run with us setting back up the government. It but will not end with a wall. It almost, will not end with a wall. It will not end with a wall? No. All right. The president says almost definitely he's going to declare a national emergency. He said that. He said, maybe, probably, definitely. Those were the order. Maybe, probably, definitely. What happens if he does? 
What happens if he does is that the courts will kick in, and I'm sure there will be plenty of lawsuits um, to determine the legitimacy of his exercise of that authority. Um, and I think what we all know is it would be an improper exercise of authority, um, which is something we have seen him do throughout his um, tenure as president. If he declares this uh, uh, an emergency, if he declares an emergency of his own manufacture here, does, does, does like a next president, let's say if there's a Democratic president next time, are the floodgates open? Can that president declare a national emergency because there is no health care and that's killing people or because we don't have sensible gun laws and people are being killed by gun violence? Is, is, is it sort of is a tool now the president's once used will always use? Part of why I wrote my book is to talk about... <laughs> Lady knows how to sell. Plug. She knows how to sell right there, okay. In part is to talk about what we have lost recently but, but must remember and fight for, which is the nobel nobility of public service. The nobility of public service. We hold these positions in the public trust. And there is some assumption that the American public rightly makes that when we have this power, we will use it in the best interest of the people we represent and not in the best interest of ourselves. All right, let's talk about abusing the public trust for just a moment here. Uh, you're on the Senate Intel uh, Committee. Um, as a prosecutor, what is your definition of conspiracy? Because Manafort has just been caught with his finger in the cookie jar, and the cookies are, are you know, really just borscht. It's just Russian. <laughs> Well, I will tell you that there is um, a lot to be concerned about rightly, and you've been covering it really well. Um, I, there, what more do we need to know um, in terms of conspiracy? We'll see what the evidence holds. And I, you know, I'm on the Intelligence Committee. We're doing it, um, an investigation. And of course, the most important thing is to let Mueller finish his investigation unimpeded without any interference. Well. Michael Cohen, we just learned Michael Cohen is going to be called before the House Intelligence Committee. Right. Um, uh, I, I assume that he's not going to be called before the Senate because they don't want him to be talking in front of you guys. You know, I, we want him to come. What would um, you ask? What I'd ask him is what he knew and when he knew it. Uh, what I'd ask him is what um, the president told him, what the president directed him to do, what were the conversations he had with the president, and um, so that we can establish exactly what happened when Russia interfered in the election of the president of the United States. We need to get to the bottom of it, and we need to know if there was collusion. Um, let's be very clear, and we can't lose sight of it in spite of what the president might try to suggest. A foreign government that is an adversary interfered in the election of the President of the United States. Many would rightly describe that as a hostile act and something that not only should be addressed, but should face some kind of consequence and accountability. And certainly at the very least, we should be focused on what we do to prevent it from happening again. Well, we have to take a little bit of a break, uh, but when we come back, I want to talk about the book and why somebody might write a book before an election. Stick around.